Bienvenidos a Brownsville, un lugar con una historia tan grande como Texas. Welcome to Brownsville, a place with a history as big as Texas. Over the years, through our, the city efforts and the efforts of, of obviously our elected officials, and the fact that we have a department that's dedicated to uh, preservation efforts, uh, we have been very successful in, in, in the idea of preserving some of our, our, our buildings. Not only preserving them, but utilizing them for use by our, our communities, whether it's for education or for our municipal or county use. We felt that we needed to preserve as many of the facilities that were still existing in our city, upgrade them to a point that people could take pride in them. Not just restore them and, 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 and make them idle, but you can utilize them for the business of today. The Cameron County Courthouse, known as the Dancy Building, which where we are today, it was a $21 million project that was long in coming. It was great that the county, along with the help of the Texas Historical Commission, uh, was able to, to restore, renovate. It's about you know maintaining our history, maintaining our culture. This is one of those jewels that we were able to uh, use local monies along with a little bit of state money to, uh, to renovate and to restore. So I think everyone's very, very happy with the final outcome. The wonderful thing about the Neutra House and the connection with the city of Brownsville, it's the first and only international single family home built by Richard Neutra back in 1937 here in Brownsville and it's the only one in Texas. Most of his homes are in Palm Springs. It was built for Richard Krager, who in 1937 was the chief pilot for Pan American Airways. And what was most important to the city of Brownsville is that it stayed open to the public. And so we collaborated and, and we came to an agreement with the University of Texas who agreed to repair it. We leased it to them for 99 years. And part of the caveat, there were two caveats, that they had to renovate it faithfully and that it had always, no matter what use the university had for it, it would always have to be open to the public. Nobody should be condemned to grow up in a city without a past. And so it's important to us to preserve the past. This became, while it's 1937, not most of our 1800 buildings, it is now the past, as many buildings will become. And so it's actually become, where well, people ignored it for many years, it is now probably one of the brightest stars in Brownsville's galaxy of historic resources. The Preserve America grant originated through a smaller grant that we applied to the Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation. And the reasoning behind that grant was we were really looking at capacity building. Our walking tours are normally only um, scheduled in January and in February uh, to accommodate winter Texans. And we always have to work around our volunteer schedule. So we wanted a way to capture all that information uh, without always having to rely on our volunteers. And so it started as an MP3 tour project uh, where we would supplement with photo murals located in downtown so that when people went on the tour they would be able to actually relate to what downtown once looked like. And from that basis, uh, when we started talking to the city, they said, well, I think we can add more to it, add kiosks and bilingual signage, and so we partnered with the Community Improvement Corporation to apply for Preserve America status, and that's sort of how that grant got started. The gym, La Jolla, also Rosa Customs Service, established 1848 at 400 East 13th. Of Spanish colonial architecture, it is the oldest building in Brownsville. I conduct walking tours of downtown Brownsville through this town site area in order for people to, local people particularly, to understand where they came from. This is the Bullock Building, Brownsville's premier department store dated from 1911, recently restored. I think it impacts the preservation effort here in Brownsville if people are able to understand what we've got. There's not any enthusiasm for preservation if you're not aware of the value of the, what we have down here, particularly down here in the heart of Brownsville, in the downtown area. And when they see what we have and what value it has, they're going to be more committed and supportive of its preservation. One of the benefits of designating West Brownsville as a, as a local historic district is that fewer and fewer people 
realize that West Brownsville is the city's first and oldest uh, suburb. Uh, we have some homes that were built as early as 1908. So we're trying to preserve a, a rich history, a rich part of the city. Uh, we have homes that have different architectural styles uh, that are over 100 years old. So I, I, think, I think that is why it, it's, it's important to, to preserve this part of town. It's definitely been a collective effort. Uh, I started uh, preserving this house in 06 and I quickly learned that I wasn't alone, that there was many people in the neighborhood that were uh, taking on different causes that impacted the neighborhood, that then impacted preservation. So we learned early on that there was strength in numbers and one of the things that we did is we started, uh, we formed a neighborhood association and we worked closely with the Heritage Office and the City of Brownsville. So we're off to a good start and there's so much more that we hope to accomplish here in West Brownsville. The Los Evanos neighborhood was developed in the early 20s and it is the first suburban garden style neighborhood built in Brownsville. And this was built to follow the lines of the Resaca so that homes would have expansive Resaca views. And the Resaca is an oxbow lake. We are probably the premier example of what having a historic designation can do to preserve the uniqueness of the neighborhood. The predominant architecture is Spanish colonial revival because this neighborhood was initially developed in the late 20s and early 30s. But we have Southern colonial, we have modern, we have Monterey colonial, which is my home style. We have many styles and that is what I think makes it such an attractive neighborhood and I think that's what draws people to live here besides of course its proximity to downtown. The city was developed in 1846 from uh, Zachary Taylor's time onwards. Well our family was here. We have people from all different walks of life in this in the cemetery, uh, whether it be of uh, different ethnicities or different cultural backgrounds, they're all represented here. And when I approached the National Register designation, it was based on the broad range of, uh, of historical aspect and, and uh, ethnicity and all that went with it. There's so much here that takes us back and, and tells us of our history as a community, as a country, and, and what went into the formative aspect of uh, what, what gave us our culture. Well, this cemetery was founded in 1868. It was deeded to the Hebrew Association by Mr. Stillman, who founded Brownsville. And this half acre has remained to be a Hebrew cemetery and is still being used. It was important that we are on the National Register because it put us on the map in Brownsville. And the other, other advantage is we exist only by donations. We get no other monies, and I'm a volunteer director, so uh, we were seeing an increase in donations uh, from family members here when we let them know that we're on the National Register. This was uh, one of those ancient ranches on the banks of the Rio Grande, originally known as Santo Tomas. 20,000 acres that went from the Rio Grande to the Aurora, Colorado. The Rab Plantation really was where agriculture first began to evolve in South Texas in the 1890s. Before that time, it was just uh, cattle ranching. But the Rab Plantation was also the place where a tiny little relic forest of sable palm survived. And it is the only remaining piece of the 40,000 acres that once covered the Rio Grande Delta. We think this makes such a great opportunity to do two things. One is to interpret the history, in particular, since the Rio Grande uh, used to wind 100 feet out there, the history of the riverboat traffic and the navigable period of the Rio Grande, but also to interpret the biodiversity of South Texas and the sable palm and the tiny relic of forest that has survived. This is the, the site where the United States came in 1846 to claim the, the Rio Grande as the boundary between the United States and Mexico. And this was the site that w served as the catalyst for, for a war between the countries. As you look around, you can see the f first obvious challenge is this site sits in the middle of a golf course. 
We essentially work with anybody who's willing to work with us in the area and unfortunately there's a lot of people who are uh, concerned about the site. The university does want to preserve the site. We've been negotiating with them on how to best save this site and, and uh, interpret it. We also work with the City of Brownsville Heritage Office. They do a lot of work in trying to get public support for protecting this site. Frank and I were married on May the 9th, 1947. And when I came here as a bride, Brownsville was just a jewel, just an incredible jewel. Beautiful old buildings along Elizabeth Street, lovely great big homes, too beautiful for words. So from the day one, I became very interested in the history of Brownsville and the Rio Grande Valley. Not only is Brownsville the site of the Battle of Palo Alto, which commenced the U.S.-Mexican War, it's also the site of the last battle of the Civil War, which was fought outside of Brownsville here, 30 days after General Lee had surrendered at Appomattox. And the history of Fort Brown, which was built there on the edge of the river. But there's so much history here still to be told. No one person can do much of anything. It's this one and this one and this one and this one, all pulling together that can make things happen. And I don't think there's anything in the world that's impossible. If enough good, hardworking people, like-minded people band together and roll up their sleeves and go to work and, and get things done. <laughs>